Hello everyone and welcome back to Cities by Steven. You're talking to Steven. Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, please hit that subscribe button. Get that bell notification on too so you don't miss out on the next episode of our new map, our new city. Uh, the city of Fort Prairie, set in southern Alberta, Canada. Uh, on the, and we're playing on the map Biomes Valley, which is a new map from the content creator pack. This map is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, for the series, we're debating between this one and Meandering River, but this one won out because look at the stunning views of this map and the changes of the biomes are so smooth and uh, just amazing. Look at the uh, the infrastructure here, it's, it's, it's beautiful. There's only one highway on this map, which really works. There's only one railway, which really works for the theme of this map set in Southern Alberta. And just the, the potential of this map is what makes it shine. I saw Overcharged Egg talk about this on his uh, review of this series, and holy cow, is this a beautiful map. I am so excited for this series. Set in Southern Alberta, Canada, uh, just as all cities on this channel are set in Canada, we have started in the east and we're moving west. Uh, if you've seen other videos on my channel, you may have seen the city of, or the, the county build of Brockton County, which is an Ontario themed city set in Southern Ontario. We're going to be doing this city alongside that one in rotating weeks. So this week, we're starting off with the new city set on the map Biomes Valley, but the city is called Fort Prairie. As the cinematic ends over top of this dry riverbed. So first, we're going to take a quick peek around the map and all these beautiful aspects to this map that we have. Starting over here, I guess we have a dried riverbed, which is a really interesting feature of this map, uh, surrounded by some hills. Not sure what exactly I've planned for this area yet, but uh, I'm sure in the winter melt, this would be quite watery, <laughs> I guess. But uh, there's only one highway and one railway going through this map. If we zoom out, if uh, the highway goes through here and out the map, the railway follows along. We get to this main infrastructure area of the build with a very level highway. You don't really see that in many vanilla maps. And a beautiful curved rail bridge over top of this river and goes into this more arid plains and cuts right across. There's only one highway and one railway through this map, which is very interesting. Uh, poses a challenge, but we knew this coming in. There's mountains off in the distance. There's a river running through and uh, perhaps the start of two rivers really converging into one and opens up into this bay area by this fertile land over here. So you may be asking, what makes this map set in Alberta, Canada, Southern Alberta, Canada? Well, a lot of things. This map may not be exactly what Southern Alberta looks like, but it has a lot of the features that dominates the prairies of Canada. Uh, vast plains, fertile land, beautiful packed forests, um, beautiful large rivers as well, uh, and also an arid landscape. I felt like this map kind of covered a lot of the bases. Oh, and of course, mountains. Well, it wouldn't be Alberta without mountains. But while these, are not be, these may not be mountains, these are kind of like the foothills of the Rockies. So the beginnings of the Rockies, and this river is probably running, starting out from the Rocky Mountains as well. Um, if we're looking, if we're thinking about uh, geography here, uh, I would say that this would be north, this would be west, this would be east, and then this would be south. Uh, for kind of just talking about uh, this uh, direct directions in uh, the comments and stuff. That's probably the, the rough estimate. I would assume it might be a bit more something like like this, north, west, east, south, but perhaps we state it like this. Anyway, so that is kind of what the, the key features of the map are. And you may be asking why Fort Prairie? Well, lots of towns in Alberta and the prairies are named after old fur trading posts from settler colonial entities in this area, like the Hudson's Bay Company and the Northwest Company. And usually they're named Fort someone's name. But I felt that 
Fort Prairie kind of sums up what this build is all about. Uh, it really fits the theme. It also catches the attention of what kind of type of build we're going to be building. We have fertile land, we have arid landscape, perfect example of a prairie with a beautiful river running through. Uh, so I guess uh, we haven't really looked at what the starting tile is going to be. This is the starting tile. It's right in here. Have the beautiful custom trumpet interchange and rail and water access right away. So if we exit out of here, we can see the starting tile. It is a fantastic starting tile to build on. It is relatively flat. It has beautiful rail access right through the middle, which can pose a challenge because you need to get over top of that or underneath it should you wish to build over here. But also have you also have a fast flowing river through here as well, which is also very, very convenient. Um, for this series, we are not going to be limiting ourselves to the tiles. We are going to be using the 81 tiles mod, which means we'll be able to build on all 81 tiles in the map. We could build a town out over here if we wanted to. We could build something out over here. We're not going to be limited to the tiles that we need to purchase. However, as with our previous series, we're going to be using the, the milestones as a guideline to our expansion of the city. So just because right away we could build our city over here, we're not going to because we're going to be playing relatively with a relatively similar to a vanilla style. We're going to, we're going to be limiting ourselves to starting in the starting tile, and we're only going to expand out of this tile to say this tile once we get that milestone. So we're going to be kind of limiting ourselves early on through there. However, once we hit the first couple milestones, we may just kind of forego that. The, in terms of mods and the plan for this series with mods and assets, we're going to be having the same mod sets and assets as Brockton County. And why? Well, it's going to be a lot easier for me on my end if we use the same mods and assets for both the series. <laughs> Um, and plus, uh, I, I feel like the mods and assets that we choose that we chose for Brockton County really fit the same theme as this one, so I really don't mind uh, using them. Uh, but before we dive into all the mods and assets that we're going to be using, I also want to mention that I'm going to be looking at importing some Snowfall DLC uh, assets as well. I feel like those would be really fitting for a Canadian-themed city. Uh, in Brockton County, we imported the hockey rink. Um, we will be doing a couple more things like that, perhaps the ski chalet for something up here, a little themed build. Even though it's not winter, those ski chalets still exist, and they usually are like hiking destinations. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the special maps that we have on this channel. So we can look at the wind map first. This one is pretty good. There's tons of wind everywhere. So we're not really limited in that regard at all. We just zoom out. Oh, no, that's not the right button, Steven. Um, yeah, there's tons of wind everywhere. So we are definitely good. A bit surprising that there's no wind over there. But we're definitely good if you want to set up a wind farm anywhere, especially right in this middle of this river. Like This is an incredible amount of wind. I could see us using this island for a wind farm in the future. That'd be really cool. Let's take a quick look at the fish. Some some salmon. That's that that makes some sense. Some anchovy. I don't know. I don't know if anchovies necessarily, but maybe we'll say like trout or something like that. That could work. Shellfish. I don't know if you want to eat shellfish from there's from these rivers, but <laughs> that's okay. Um, what other maps? The resources maps. This is one of the big features of this map of why I wanted to do this. If you didn't know, uh, oil is a major industry in Alberta. Um, and there is a ton of oil out over here. So it also makes sense for a themed build, like all of my cities are, to have a large oil area. We also have some nice fertile soil, some lumber possibilities, some ore possibilities. Yeah, just fantastic resources all around. We've already looked at the connectivity of the region, but how about the topography? Well, like I said, the starting tile is relatively flat. There's there's some issues here. The starting interchange is on a hill. That's something to keep in mind when building. But you know there are some larger topographical challenges out over here as we get into 
the mountains. And that's fantastic. I mean, poses some challenges. It's it's very friendly to building everywhere, but the topography isn't just non-existent either. It's it's relatively it's, it's relatively uh, challenging. There, there's there's lots of little aspects like this little cliff right here. That's a that's that's rather steep for just it doesn't look like it but if you're building a road or a house on it it's definitely going to show on your map it's going to have a bit of a um a bump out right here so over here too so there's lots of uh, little bumps right away uh, and then we get into the larger dips and valleys as well so that'll be good i think that is the all of the uh, yeah, all of the important maps to look at at the moment. Um, so we'll, let's talk about some of the plans I have for the series. Well, I really want to use all of the biomes from Biomes Valley, this map, properly. So we're going to be using this area for some nice fertile farming, some, some farming, this fertile land for some farming. That's the right word, Stephen. <laughs> uh, we're going to have our oil industry out over here, which makes a lot of thematic sense. Uh, we're gonna have some forestry probably not over here per se, but maybe up in here We can have some forestry out over this way The forestry might be a bit challenging. Uh, I think we had some ore over this way So that could be fun. There's also ore right here so a lot a lot a lot of Resources are running off of one rail track and one highway. I am very excited about the challenge of this the traffic is going to get intense. However, we have the possibilities of making further highway connections. With the 81 tiles mod, we'll be able to build, say, an interchange right here. We'll be able to connect out of bounds over this way and then out of bounds <laughs> over here. So we're gonna get to choose how we connect outside of our region as well. But having the one highway limit is going to be a fun challenge, I believe. And the same with the railway too, it's gonna be a fun challenge. Uh, we're not going to just blow through a mountain. We're gonna respect the topography as well. And we're going to need, we're gonna abide by the challenges of the map. So we're also gonna be looking at building our downtown over here, I believe. I think this is probably the best spot for the downtown. It's a really nice area. The city's gonna be smaller than Brockton County. It's gonna be a shorter series than Brockton County. Brockton County is going to live on for quite some time. This one I want to see out to the end. Probably within a hundred episodes, but we shall see. Um, I feel like this is uh, probably the best spot for the downtown. It's a beautiful area. It's a beautiful backdrop. I really want to make use of this island in the downtown. Um, it'd be cool getting some ritzy suburbs in the mountains over here, but also it makes sense. Uh, a lot of the rivers are flowing into the, right here, converging on this one. This is this type of areas where cities tend to pop up. Um, it also makes sense for the theme. So we're saying that this is Fort Prairie, probably started out as a fur trading post from the Hudson's Bay Company or the Northwest Company, um, and a town sort of growing, growing up around it. So it would make sense that the fort, the original fort, which probably wouldn't exist anymore, would either be over here or over here. This is too fertile of land to give up, so we're going to say it's over here. However, the starting tile is over this way, so what we're going to be doing with the starting tile? Well, we're going to be building a railway town right off the beginning. This railway runs right through the middle, so we're going to use uh, the starting tile to kind of build an old-fashioned railway town set on the grid that was probably imposed on it back in the day when settlers first started coming into the area. So we're thinking, we're talking like early 1900s, post 1905, when Alberta became a province. No, that's not incorrect, is it? That's not correct. That's Saskatchewan. Maybe it's Alberta too, I forget. <laughs> um, all right, so that is the relative plan. Uh, we're also gonna get some smaller towns along the railway um, in both directions probably. Uh, I don't think we're going to get a town over this way. Whoa, sorry about that. Over this way, probably not. But I could see us getting a town out over here. So uh, let's just take a quick numeration. So we go one, two, three potential side towns. 
a downtown, some suburban sprawl, maybe some small suburban towns as well. Um, oh, this is actually this is actually a pretty nice spot for one too. So we'll see how many small towns we get to, but I think I want to have more small towns, less suburban sprawl than uh, Brockton County. Brockton County turned into just one giant blob, which is perfect. It's the it's it's the exact theme that we wanted. Um, so now uh, I'm gonna transition to a bit of a Q and A uh, portion. I've been getting some questions, um, Instagram, in the comment section, and YouTube. Uh, which, by the way, feel free to leave a comment down below if you have any questions at any point. Um, if you have any mods, uh, if you have any requests from special mods, some cool assets, general questions about this, this uh, the game. If you wanna make a suggestion on the series, say you want to name a road or a district, please feel free, any road, any district, leave a name suggestion down below. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been getting some questions about myself. So my name is Steven. I am from Canada. I currently live in Ottawa, Canada, the capital of Canada. Uh, I have a really cute dog named Kevin. He's a husky mix from a Callowit. He's adorable. Um, and uh, when did I start playing City Skylines? Well, I've been playing city building games my entire life. One of my favorite games growing up was Civ City Rome, which is a civilization building game <laughs> set in the Roman times. Uh, all the Sim Cities growing up too, that was fantastic. I'm in my mid-20s, on the, on the latter half, unfortunately. Um, and uh, City Skylines, when it started coming out on console, I started playing it. Fell in love with the game. Again, I played the original uh, game. I forget the name of it right now, but that's okay. Um, and when the pandemic hit, I got a new computer, bought the game on PC, and my friends wanted to see what cities I was building. So I was like, I'll just figure I'll post them on YouTube. And that's how I started. We just passed uh, 300 City Skylines episodes on the channel a couple weeks ago, which is pretty awesome. Um, so. I totally understand where vanilla and console players come from. I I played console, I played vanilla. There are lots more challenges than in playing on PC with mods. Uh, and speaking of mods, let's talk about the mods and assets. Well, for assets, we're going to be adding in the, win the Snowfall DLC stuff. Uh, we're going to be adding in uh, interesting themed assets from the workshop on Steam, like places of worship. Um, sports fields, uh, things that I believe should be in the game anyways. Uh, different library assets. It's always interesting that there's only one library. Um, but for the mods, let's take a quick peek at the mods I have currently listed. Now this isn't exactly accurate because I had to remove a bunch of mods because of the airport DLC. So we're going to have the 81 tiles mod, achieve it, so I can still get achievements. <laughs> the better road toolbar reorganizes uh, roads. Building spawn points is an amazing, amazing mod for doing unique factories. Building themes. Cinematic camera extended. Clouds and fog toggler, even though I don't really need this anymore. I should probably remove that one. The CSL map view mod, which is a map, uh, which is a mod, which produces a unique map of your city. Uh, so we can show it off in, uh, say we're doing transit. It's really important to kind of view it from that angle. We'll, We'll see that down the line. That's for me. Extra landscaping tools is a fantastic mod for landscaping. Find it is so convenient. First person camera is really funny. Uh, forest brush is extremely convenient. <laughs> the FPS booster. Hide it. Hide it is actually something that I should show off right now. Uh, we are hiding seagulls and wildlife because we don't want them running in the background of our city. And then we're also removing all bright decorations, so cliff, grass, and fertile soil. So that is the textures that appear when you zoom in. See how there's no texture? If I left that on, there would be, and it would be taking away too much power from my computer. That is unnecessary. And sometimes they glitch through buildings, and it's uh, not exactly the cleanest thing. So we got the intersection marking tool. It's fantastic. We're showing that off right away. Uh, road anarchy, fine road tool, the loading screen mod. More effective transfers, that is also fantastic. Move it is the most important mod in the entire game. 
followed by the network multi-tool. It's probably the second most important. And then the third most important, node controller. <laughs> so right away, those three are probably, probably the most important uh, mods if you're starting out. Optimize outside connections. Parallel road tool is really convenient when building highways. Parkify. Parking lot snapping. This is the bane of my existence. Before, the, before this mod happened, sorry. Building the parking lots was the bane of my existence. So this mod saves my life. Saved my life. It was amazing. Uh, patch loader mod. The picker mod is extremely convenient for recording. It's just so easy just to click to something I want to keep building. Uh, especially when you're using multiple roads. Precision engineering. Prop line anarchy. Sorry, prop and tree anarchy. Prop line tool. Prop snapping. Uh, this helps remove crossings. The roundabout builder is really convenient. Surface Painter is a fantastic mod. This is also a top five mod for sure. Traffic Manager Present Edition. Uh, that's for trees. That's for, for you all. Um, Unlimited Trees mod is also required for 81 tiles, I believe. Not actually, but it's really convenient because you don't have a limit on how many trees you can have. Uh, Watch It is what is right here, and then the Zoning Adjuster. Uh, this is for you all, so you can all Constantly keep track of it's also really convenient for me, but you can constantly keep track and like oh Steven's forgetting about his garbage uh, Steven's really neglecting high school uh, The police force in Steven City is not doing too good. So you can, all, you can all see that there. So that's the mods the assets I'll show off the assets um, as we get to them, but you know things that really should be in the city like sports fields um, Places of worship uh, Something unique that I think is maybe something uniquely Canadian um, will be kind of shown. Uh, so that's kind of the only, the only assets are really import. Other than that, it's going to be a vanilla series. So you know, vanilla plus, lightly modded. Not I'm not modding the buildings at all. Nothing like that. So that is uh, kind of the plan for the series. I hope you all uh, like the the map, and I can't wait to show it. Uh, to show off what I have planned for our first episode on Wednesday, because this series comes out Monday, Wednesday, Fridays on rotating weeks with Brockton County. So I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you all on Wednesday for the first episode of Fort Prairie, an Alberta-themed city. Peace out.